Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about aerobic respiration in bacteria. Before we get started, a quick note for you to consider. Bacteria are a really, really, really diverse group of organisms. They have vastly different metabolisms. Some of them conduct photosynthesis, some don't. Some carry out nitrogen fixation, some don't. Um, different bacteria will use different final electron acceptors, different carbon sources. Um, some require oxygen, for others oxygen is toxic. So as we go through this video, please keep in mind that we're only talking about a certain subset of bacteria. And so the bacteria that we are focusing on in this video are those that are known as aerobic. Aerobic bacteria are the bacteria that use oxygen as a final electron acceptor in cell respiration. In other words, these are the bacteria whose metabolisms are um, maybe a bit more like humans. That doesn't mean that they're exactly the same by any means, but they at least do use oxygen for their final electron acceptor in cell respiration, which of course is that process of um, converting the energy that's stored in compounds like glucose into an easily available form called ATP. Now with these aerobic bacteria, they still use glycolysis, they still use the Krebs cycle, they still use an electron transport chain, they still use ATP synthase. If you know about aerobic respiration in animals, then you should recognize all of these things. The main <clears throat> difference for these bacteria in terms of their cellular respiration process is that they carry out these different aspects without mitochondria. So if you can remember back to learning about aerobic respiration, which I have a video on if you're interested, uh, glycolysis in the Krebs cycle, um, well, glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm in human cells, um, then pyruvate moves into the mitochondria, and then that's where the Krebs cycle takes place, and then the electron transport chain of the ATP synthase are in those inner folds called the cristae of the mitochondria. But of course, bacteria, they're not eukaryotic cells. They're prokaryotic cells. They don't have membrane-bound organelles and they certainly don't have mitochondria. So what do they use? They actually just use their regular plasma membrane. So glycolysis, where glucose gets converted, converted to pyruvate, still happens in the cytoplasm. Um, the Krebs cycle is also happening in the cytoplasm. And then the electron transport chain, uh, drawn here in orange with the electron transfers shown in green, uh, oxygen is right here. That's the oxygen, the final electron acceptor. All of that is happening in the plasma membrane. So you have the proton motive force that's building up. Those protons are being pumped across the membrane um, as the electron is going from sort of a high energy electron and going down the chain. So the hydrogen ion concentration is building up in the space known as the periplasmic space that is between the plasma membrane and the cell wall. Um, out here is the extracellular space. Um, the plasma membrane is not drawn to scale here. I've made it larger than the cell wall just so we can see the, the proteins that are, are present. Here we have the ATP synthase where ATP is being made. And so the main point of this video is to understand that these, um, these processes are quite similar to what's going on even in human cells to break down glucose and to, to harvest the energy in those bonds and convert it into ATP. The main point here is that the major difference for aerobic respiration in bacteria is just the location where it happens. The main thing is that they're using this plasma membrane right here to hold their electron transport chain and ATP synthase rather than having um, a mitochondria with an inner membrane where that process is happening. If you're interested in learning more about bacteria, either their oxygen requirements um, or the types of um, carbon and energy sources they use, check out my videos on bacterial oxygen requirements, and also heterotrophs, autotrophs, chemotrophs, and phototrophs. Uh, and then also I have a video on aerobic respiration if you wanna learn a little bit more about the, um, the biochemistry of this process. So thanks for watching today and see you next time.